Good afternoon, welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are doing an owner's review by popular demand by all four of you that have asked uh, on my Nissan Frontier. This is a 2006 uh, Nissan Frontier. I've built it up, I've played with it. Uh, it's got 230,000 miles on it now. And we're just gonna go over what I've had to do in the time I've owned it. I did not buy this new. I bought it with about 65,000 miles on it. There was one owner prior to me. I spent, if I remember right, this has been a while, uh, nine years. I think I bought it for $11,000 and this is by far the best financial decision I have ever made on anything. Uh, this truck has been very, 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 very good to me. It has never once let me down, never once broken down. And uh, it's, that's a pretty good thing to say for 230,000 miles. So let's give you a tour. Let's uh, show you what's up. We just drove through a little mud puddle just to make it look good for you. Uh, some people like them clean, some people like them dirty. So if you like them clean, too bad. Uh, what we have here is we have the BFG K02 tires on here. These are the 33 inches as opposed to the stock. Uh, in order to fit the 33 inches, we have the Radflow 2.0 coilovers, the SPC upper control arms, which are uh, the racing style. We still have the stock rims. I've always wanted to upgrade them, just haven't because, you know, it's a cosmetic only thing and I don't like spending money on cosmetics unless I have to. Plus, I have a wife that really doesn't like me doing that. So, stock rims, that's all good. Uh, walking around to the front here, we have a light bar, which is all muddy right now. We've got the pods. They're on different switches, so you can use them as need be. These pods are actual fit. Uh, actually fish eye pods I don't I forget the exact term but they are DOT approved so as long as they're aimed and not pointing at people I can actually use them while uh, on the freeway which is super awesome the light bar that does not apply to but the the pods they do you can't really see them right now because you know we just ran through the mud but whatever uh, let's see for the front that's really it for the front coming around, we've got the stubby antenna, which looks awesome, but it sucks when you're on the outskirts of town. So if you are thinking about putting a stubby antenna on, just remember your reception does go down. I read a lot of reviews, just like you are going to or have the, a lot of people said, oh yeah, no difference. I bet you they live in the city because I live on the edge of the city and I drive a long way through rural areas every day for work and this thing sucks, <laughs> but it looks cool. I listen to Pandora through my phone anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. I go for looks over function on that one. Uh, coming on around to the back, the paint job on this truck is still immaculate. Part of that's because it was in a little bit of a wreck and they had to repaint some of it. So. A lot of you guys have the, the faded paint on the hood and the roof. I don't have that issue, but it has been repainted. Uh, in the back, we have the Alkin. Uh, Alkin is a custom spring fabricator. So we have an Alkin 9 leaf custom pack for the spring, uh, the, the spring leaves. Uh, what that is, or what I had them do, is we replace the entire OEM pack because they suck. If you've had one of these for a while, you know that they flatten out and then bow upside down. So this custom pack, they built in an extra 500 pounds worth of carrying capacity for me. They also put in about three and a half inches of lift as well, or sorry, three inches of lift in the back, all built into that uh, spring. So there's no blocks, there's nothing like that. It's a much better lift. It's a much better ride quality than blocks um, or shackles. So a lot of people like the shackle lift. Uh, for me, this was the way to go. It was much better and I do not regret it at all. Uh, um, in the back here, you can't see this one either because it's muddy, that might've been a bad idea. I've put on, welded on a new tip on the muffler just for fun, just to make it look a little better. And it's chrome. I know you can't see that, but it looks pretty sweet when it's clean. Uh, in the rear here, you'll see these uh, little pod lights. These are floodlights in the rear bumper. We cut them in. This is on a switch that automatically turns on with uh, when I uh, shift the transmission into reverse. I also have them on the option to have them on manually. What that allows you to do is when you're in the woods at night and you want to back up, it illuminates the whole area because as anybody knows, your stock taillights, they don't really 
uh, they don't really help you out much for backing up. They're more of a visual aid for other vehicles. So having these floodlights really allows you to see when you are backing up, uh, which is super handy, especially when you have the limo tint on the back and you can barely see out anyway. Those are a huge upgrade, very nice. Coming over here by the license plate, we have the uh, trailer hookup. So as any of you know that have this truck, you do this does not come there. Uh, you have your hookups underneath and most people mount the hookup to the actual hitch. Uh, this, I just took a hole saw, drilled in, put this in, it's got the seven way round and it is much, much nicer, much cooler and it just looks so smooth having it in the bumper. Uh, I don't have the four way flat because I have an adapter for it. The four way flat just made this extra big and extra ugly. and. Uh, yeah, so I just stuck with that and got an adapter. Uh, my recommendation do is to do whatever the heck you want to do. Uh, for the bed, we have nothing really special. We have the Rhino liner on the inside. This has been a huge uh, benefit to me. I love it. I hate standard, just regular beds. We got the bed extender, which flips down when you got the tailgate out, gives you a little bit more space. Uh, with a five foot bed here, you know, it's kind of you kind of need a little more space sometimes. It just doesn't do quite enough. All right, so you may have seen as we were going through this little thing right here, I never finished beautifying this up, but it, the function is there. Uh, this is a CB antenna mount. Uh, I mounted the actual mount for the antenna behind the tail light here, tail lamp. So it's up in here and then it sticks out and then I can just take my uh, fire, uh, what is it, firefly, fire, what's it? fire stick I can take my fire stick and just screw it in right here and it looks it looks really good and it's also more stable because it's got the bed rail to hold it tight uh, on the inside of the bed all you really see from that are the bolt holes uh, so you can see where I mismeasured and I you know I put it down a little bit too low we corrected that and now it functions fantastic uh, I, I really like having it in the bed rail just personally uh, the toolbox right there you'll see is a 12 inch toolbox. I used to have an 18 inch because that's what I could find to buy and it just took up too much of the bed with the short bed. So this is a 12 inch, takes up a lot less room. Uh, if you don't need a toolbox, you don't need one. However, I really like to keep my chains, my toe straps, my uh, load straps, my jack, uh, because I have car seats in the back seat often, so you can't access the jack, so I put the jack in there. Uh, a pair of gloves, a safety vest, and you know all that good stuff. Uh, that's what I keep in there. Uh, let's see. The differential breather, oh, also known as the axle vent on this truck from the factory. If you own one, is super crappy. Oh, so I'm gonna go back here, and that would go right here. Uh, what we did is I took a hose and I extended it back up behind the tail light. It just keeps mud, dirt, debris, and water out of your uh, axle seals, which will help keep from blowing them. Um, very cool, very sweet. Uh, for any of you that, for those of you that don't know, uh, your stock tire is a lot smaller than the 33s I have installed. For your information, this is a 33 inch tire and it fits up here in this spot and there is room to spare so you could probably get something a little bit bigger even but this is a 33 inch spare so you can throw it on and keep going no hassle uh, in the back when we did the lift we put the 50 uh, Bilstein 5125s on this v uh, truck uh, it's a much nicer ride than the stock whatever the heck they were I don't know but they sucked so the 5125s with the extra three inch lift capacity in here has dramatically increased the ride quality of this truck. This is the leaf pack we were talking about, your nine leaf pack. Highly recommend, very, very nice. If you're looking to purchase one of these, the back seat is not really a huge uh, uh, awesome factor. It's a standard back seat, it's not overly comfortable. I'm six foot tall, this is the front seat all the way back. You can fit a full grown adult in there. It's not comfortable for more than an hour, but for an hour you can get places. When you lift the seat, of course, you've got your cubbies down there uh, for storage, which people go crazy over. Now, if you're like me and you got car seats in the back here normally, those don't really do you a whole lot of good because you got a car seat there, but you know, it's there. 
but you got your typical the chrome on this truck everywhere the door handles up front has held up very well I've had other cars where the chrome just falls apart I mean it just starts cracking and falling apart all the chrome on this truck is held together very nicely as far as the front side goes ignore the mud we just drove through the mud right now again chrome holds up great the steering is super tight always has been the uh, you've got your switches down there on the uh, I don't know what you want to call that center console for all your different lights. I've put the Takancha P3 brake controller on this truck. That was a worthwhile investment as well. Uh, for I mean, this truck is small. You're hauling hauling a load. You want to be able to stop. We also have a transmission temperature gauge that I installed after market because I haul a lot and there's no transmission. Uh, temperature gauge on this truck so now it has one I can monitor it so on that note on the transmission people seem to want to know when they find out I have one hey what do you run at so on a dry pavement no load with the 33 inch load rated E tires on flat road when it's about 118 degrees outside I'm running about 165 to 180 uh, degrees in the transmission that is with a CSF racing uh, radiator and an external extra uh, transmission cooler so typically 165 to 180 somewhere in there when I start going up the mountains if I'm going up a long uphill streak at 65 miles an hour it'll climb to as much as about 210 degrees and then obviously as soon as you level out or go down it drops right back down I've been very happy with the aftermarket radiator and transmission cooler no regrets uh -huh. pop the hood okay. all right so we're gonna look under the hood and see a few things down there there's not much you can actually see uh, this is the v6 4.0 if we didn't mention that previously uh, this truck this engine has been bulletproof same with the transmission I have not had any issues with the transmission at all uh, I put an AGM battery in here several years ago the Bosch as a from a recommendation I've been very happy with that battery here in Arizona uh, your typical battery is only going to last a couple of years this one's been in for several and it still has full voltage voltage when you test it it still powers up every time this truck will sometimes sit for a couple weeks at a time and when I go to turn the key after that it starts right up as if it was started an hour ago very 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 awesome battery I highly recommend it I've put one in my car as well now this is the CSF racing ooh, that's hot. CSF racing radiator. Uh, essentially how this works and how you get that extra cooling is there's two rows of uh, tubes in here. Uh, so you can fit a little bit more fluid and the fins are just, uh, I'm not an engineer and I don't really understand how it works, but there's a lot more cooling capacity for both the coolant and the transmission lines running through there. On that note, if you have or if you're looking at a frontier that is the years between 2005 and 2010 the stock radiators had a faulty condition where the, uh, the the transmission and the coolant share the same radiator and the plate that separated the two would fail and you would end up with coolant in your transmission and transmission fluid going through your cooling system and essentially you'd get what they called smod which is the strawberry milkshake of death and everything just mixes and gets nasty and then your transmission's toast and you need a new transmission flushing it doesn't always work in fact it rarely ever works so if you have one between those years find out if it's been replaced if it hasn't replace it immediately because that has been the end of many a good frontier uh, okay so that's the radiator moving on from there we got your just standard stuff I mean you've got your air intake a lot of people put the cold air intakes my point on that is it's already a cold air intake uh, it's bringing air in from the wheel well so why people change it uh, when you open when you open up this box and you put a cold air intake this is my personal opinion I'm not an engineer I'm not a mechanic I'm just a dude uh, but the way my brain works if you open this filter and you get one of those round ones that they call cold air intake all you're doing is you're pulling air in from the engine bay which is as we know super hot 
if you leave this together as it is, it's pulling air from the wheel well, which is not hot. So in my mind, my unofficial non-mechanic mind, cold air intake is a scam. I hate to say it. I could be wrong. It's very likely I'm wrong, but my common sense way of thinking, what I'm viewing as common sense is leave it as is. It's a cold air intake already. If you open it up, it becomes a hot air intake, which I don't know. Who cares? Anyway, moving on. Uh, I do have a can and drop in filter in there. Call it what you may. I like it not because I think it's cleaner. It gives me more horsepower. I like it because I've had this truck 230,000 miles almost. And if you change that filter every 5,000, that gets very expensive. Uh, <laughs> very expensive. So the K&N filter, I think it was 80 bucks to purchase. And it's been in there for many, 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 many miles. Uh, what? It's a good cost savings. Uh, I don't have it for the performance. So now nah, you know that if you cared. Uh, really, that's it. That's under here. I haven't really done a whole lot of mods. Oh, so the trans, not the transmission mount, the motor mounts. I put in some motor mounts. These ones failed a while back. And I put in, uh, if you go to prgproducts.com, Greg, I'm going to do a shout out. I'm not sponsored, but he has earned my trust and my loyalty. The, uh, he sells a polyurethane motor mount. Uh, and it's a lot harder than the rubber stock ones from Nissan. It's a little bit more expensive, uh, obviously, but it is amazing. The, the engine, so if I was to start this up and hit the gas right now in park, the engine is not going to jerk. It's not going to move. It'll move a little bit, obviously, but it, it's very, very, very solid. Now, the downside to that is because they are a lot more hard, they're not solid. They're polyurethane, so they mean they're more solid than rubber. Because of that, uh, the vibration of the engine does transition into the rest of the truck a little bit. I was warned that uh, before and I was told, hey, it's not a big deal, but you will feel more vibration. And indeed that is true. I do feel more vibration. Now, if I was to jump in this truck never having driven it before, I probably would not know. Uh, it's, it's a very, very little amount, but we are attached uh, and I know exactly how this feels and how it goes and there is some more vibration, but not a big deal. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see. As far as maintenance costs on this truck, I have had to replace quite a bit of stuff through the years. Nothing that you wouldn't expect. Uh, the catalytic converters, both the front ones have gone. The first one went at, I think it was like 195,000 miles. The second one went at about 215,000 miles. So expect to replace those about that time. Uh, I've heard people with 300, 400,000 miles that have never had to replace them. I did not get that lucky. Oh well. So those I've had to replace. The rear drive shaft got out of balance at one point, so I had to have that fixed. Uh, let me pull out my notes. Intake manifold gasket we had to replace. It started leaking uh, oil. <coughs> so I had that. That I actually paid somebody to replace uh, probably about 190,000 miles. Let's see. The fan clutch on this thing, but nothing bad at actually. I'm probably going to just cut that out. All right. <laughs> the fan clutch on this thing, I had to replace at 180,000 miles. It was still OEM up until that point. And I replaced at 180,000 miles with a new one. That was pretty good as far as I'm concerned, getting 180 out of it. The wheel bearings. So the wheel bearings on this truck, the stock wheel bearings up front lasted me until about 150K. Uh, at 150K, this passenger one started to uh, sound not so great. So I took those out. I replaced them with a Duralast uh, wheel bearings. I'm not trashing Duralast because I do have stuff that is Duralast that has lasted. Uh, but the wheel bearings I put on there at 150K lasted about 20K and I had to put some new ones on there. So about 170K I put some Moogs on there, or Mogs or whatever the heck you call them. I say Moog, whatever. For the purpose of the video, Moog is Mog and Mog is Moog. Uh, and if you have a different way of saying it, throw that in there too. So I put Moogs on the front wheel bearings and they have been on for a long time. I've had zero issues. Uh, they were a lot cheaper than OEM and that's where we're at and I've been happy. Uh, on that note, seems how I just bashed Duralast, which is AutoZone. 
I will talk them up as well. The oil pressure gauge on the earlier second gens, this is considered second gen from 2005 to infinity or 2019, I guess 2020. Today is 2020. Uh, it's January of 2020 and supposedly this year they're announcing a new body style finally. Uh, we've been 15 years in the running with this body style, which I like. I still like it, but whatever. I have no idea what I was talking about now. Oh, so Duralas. Uh, the oil pressure sensor in the earlier second gens was not great and it failed a lot. I did put a Duralast one in here right after I bought this truck about nine years ago and the oil pressure sensor is a real oil pressure sensor not the dummy one and that is good that has lasted so that is a Duralast uh, so not all Duralast is bad and I'm not trying to trash them I'm just saying it as it is uh, what else we got on here so the tie rods believe it or not even with the 33 inch tires lasted a long long time we replaced the outers they finally went at I want to say 205,000 miles. It was stock all the way up to 205,000 miles. And even when we replaced the outers, the inners were still good. Uh, but for the price, I replaced the inners at the same time. When you do your own work, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, so because they were so cheap, I replaced the outers and the inners. But the stock tie rods lasted for freaking ever, which is kind of surprising to me. The The only other thing that has ever really happened to this truck is the heater, uh, the heater core. So the heater core is the only thing that's ever failed on me and almost left me stranded. Uh, I was at Home Depot, I had a trailer on the truck and I was coming in and as I pulled onto my street, the heater core blew. Uh, I got to my driveway, no problem. So the record still stands, this has not stranded me anywhere. Uh, but what happened is up here, So up here, you've got all this plastic stuff. And over the years, this plastic dry rots and cracks. Uh, and this is a heater core, I mean, it's hot in there. And it just snapped on me one day. So they sell replacement parts right here, just the T or whatever, and the couplings. It is not worth it, in my opinion, to just replace that. We replace the whole freaking thing because I plan on keeping this truck for a very long time, which I have. That is the only thing to date that has almost stranded me. Uh, this truck has been amazing. Um, would I buy another one of these? I absolutely 100% would. I started this video out saying this was the best financial decision I've ever made. I still stand by that. Uh, of all the vehicles I've ever had, and I've had a few, this has been by far the most reliable, the most dependable, the just everything. It's been fantastic. I have no issues with this truck. Uh, you do have to do your regular maintenance. If you want it to last, you have to change your oil, you have to change your transmission fluid, your differential fluid, you have to keep up with your hoses and, and all that stuff, but that's nothing, nothing that you shouldn't do with any vehicle. But if you want it to last, in my opinion, Nissan has proven itself with this truck. That's probably why they haven't changed it. Uh, I get about 17 miles of the gallon on average and I'm okay with that because I know this truck's gonna get me where I'm going. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that in my book. For me, dependability is number one. Uh, styling is important, but I like this style. Uh, kinda looks like the mini Titan back in the day. Uh, in fact, that's what I used to call it. I call it the baby Titan. Um, but yeah, so if you're asking me, should you buy one? I'm gonna say absolutely. If you're, uh, <laughs> this truck is awesome. Uh, one other thing to mention I just now thought of, uh, we did put hood struts on from Off-Road Gorilla. Again, I'm not sponsored, I'm not paid by anybody, but Off-Road Gorilla, these struts have been fantastic. They are a lot thicker than a lot of other struts I've seen out there. They hold the hood up, they open it an extra few inches that you wouldn't have, and they are freaking robust. Just a little shout out on that one too. Uh, if somebody deserves it, I have no problem doing that. Okay, so something else noteworthy that we've done to this truck is the there's all that mud <laughs> is the tow hooks so as you know if you know the factory tow hooks are not really even tow hooks they're more like strap hooks for shipping so what i did is i got with somebody that knows more about stuff than i do from work 
and we put on these aftermarket tow hooks now the uh, the hole setting and thread setting for Nissan is very specific to nothing else in, that we could find so the way around that let's see if this was nice and light over here yeah, a little bit so the way around that is we grabbed this half inch thick steel half inch thick steel drilled our own holes and uh, slapped the bolts back into the frame which is where the original uh, tow hooks go and then we just offset uh, this this piece is like uh, just I guess right now five inches wide so we we're able to offset the tow hook and so now the tow hook is over here uh, these are very solid very good I've used them a couple times just for fun and uh, yeah they are very solid and it worked out great we just did through bolts and nuts uh, and along oh, that note you may have noticed I got rid of the vortex guard or air dam or whatever the heck you call it just for looks because I don't like that look. I like this look better. So that is my review of this truck. 100% uh, love it, 100% would buy it again, 100% recommend it to anybody that needs one about this size. Uh, something else I didn't mention in the video that keep popping up, uh, I already covered the tow hooks afterwards. The fuel pump sending unit or the fuel level sending unit. I should say also went out at about 120,000 miles it did not affect the performance of the truck did not affect the uh, fuel delivery all it affected was the needle and where it stood so it would read three quarters when you only had a quarter or it read a quarter when you only had you know a half it was very undependable so because of that uh, it's not a big deal uh, I didn't really care However, it does trigger the check engine light, and here in Arizona, uh, where I'm at, we have the emissions control, which meant I had to fix it. So we fixed it. Unfortunately, it is built into the pump itself, uh, which means you got to replace the whole entire fuel pump. It's not a hard job by any means, but it is about a $350 job if you do it yourself. I got it quoted. It was $700, including parts, to have someone else do it. Uh, but not hard at all to do yourself. Uh, but yeah, anyway, if you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button so you can see my other videos. Uh, share my videos, comment on them, leave thumbs ups. Um, I'm going to link down below all of the uh, essentially modifications and or repairs that I've filmed on this truck. Uh, I've done a lot more than what's on film. I just started this channel last year, not even a full year ago. So I don't have everything on there, but it is what it is. I do have quite a few videos, though, so check it out. Give me some love, leave a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you next time. Oh.